Hi, I'm Matt Ambrose with the Defense Acquisition University. For the next 10 minutes, I'm going to take you on a walkthrough of the production and deployment phase of the Defense Acquisition System. Hopefully by now you've seen an overview of the overall five phases and you've seen an overview of the engineering and manufacturing development phase. We were getting ready for this phase during the last phase, just like we always do in defense acquisition, but now we're getting into the actual production and deployment of the system. In order to enter the phase, we have to have acceptable performance in the testing that we did in the previous phase. We certainly don't want significant manufacturing risks anymore. We also want to see acceptable interoperability, supportability, and affordability. All of those things are going to be checked at Milestone C before we go forward. In this phase, the major things we're going to do is start with low rate initial production right at Milestone C. That's what we get going on. In order to perform our initial operational test and evaluation and live fire testing, we've got to have no kidding production units and those are produced there starting with low rate initial production. That also establishes our production base for us. After that, we will get into full rate production and fielding of the rest of the systems. And you'll notice in the meantime here, we're going to have to support. That's why you've got this large slanting line right here is that we're going to start operations and support the next phase in parallel. As soon as we have no kidding go to war units being fielded, then we've got to support those and start the next phase. So there's a lot of parallel effort going on there. We'll also establish our initial operational capability, usually of one unit's worth of equipment and full operational capability when we have all of them out there in the field and the units are ready to go to war. Our war fighters are going to help us during this time refine our goals and our requirements for supportability based on feedback that we get from the field. And we're also going to have to manage, in this case, about three different appropriations of funds. We'll talk about that as we get into the different functional areas here now. The first functional area I'd like to talk about is program management. So they're overseeing the overall effort here. We've got to update that acquisition strategy because we've got another major decision point, that full rate production decision review. And in order to get through that, you need an updated plan. And that is our acquisition strategy. Now we're focusing on that full rate production and deployment and then sustaining the system as we deploy them. We also want to establish the initial production base here. That's what low rate initial production is all about, the first part of this phase. And we're going to assess the performance of those units that come off that low rate production line in that initial operational test and evaluation, kind of that big final exam. We'll talk about more when we get to the test and evaluation lane. We've got to produce and field and support the system. That's what really this phase is all about. And so the program management folks are going to be overseeing that whole process. We also need to collaborate with our users to make sure that as we field these things and we get some feedback from the fielded systems that we're then updating what our goals are, what our metrics are, what our incentives are to get better supportability for the warfighter out there as we deploy the systems. Moving to contracting, as you might imagine from the things I've already described, there's a lot of effort going on here. There might be several contracts that we would go after for support. There might be just one. Really depends on your contracting strategy, but it doesn't really matter what your contracting strategy is. There's going to be a lot of effort on contract that your contracts management folks are going to have to take care of. We're going to be exercising contract options for lots of production, most likely, uh, once we get the initial production contract signed. And then we're also going to develop and refine incentives as we go forward, just like I talked about in the previous area. And that is based on, again, feedback from the field and figuring out just what it is that's smart to incentivize our contractors to do for us that gives better support to the warfighter, either better reliability or perhaps better turnaround time, quicker repair time, those kinds of things. We also want to manage contract performance there, take those incentives, and, and actually apply them uh, so that we do drive contractors' behavior the way that we want it to go and get better stuff. Financial management, as I said earlier, now you're going to be managing probably three different appropriations. You've still got some major testing going on, so you've got RDT&E kinds of funding or research development test and evaluation funding. You've also got procurement funding. 
which pays for the production that's going on in this phase. And then you've got to support the system, so you've got operations and maintenance funding as well. Uh, so our poor financial managers are going to have to be really involved in what's going on here and stay on top of it to make sure our funds are planned for and executed properly. They also can help us in uh, assessing the financial health of our production base and make sure that uh, those contractors that we have out there and subcontractors are in a good position uh, to ramp up to full rate production and get things done. And they can also monitor the production and support cost for us, make sure we're getting a good deal and that the estimates are coming out the way that we uh, had hoped for them to. We also want to assist the program management folks here from the financial management standpoint with those should cost targets uh, to make sure we're always trying to drive down costs. That way the cost or the money that we recoup, we can either put into um, quicker fielding or possibly fielding more systems. So we're always looking for ways to drive to a should cost goal so that we've got more money to apply to giving more ore fighting capability out there to our users. We also want to manage that PPBE process, you know, all, all the way through. We're talking planning for the out years as well as budgeting the coming year and making sure our execution is going well uh, so that uh, we can use all the funds that we have in this year in, in a good efficient manner. Systems engineering now switching tracks here to the technical side of things. Quite a bit going on here as well as you would imagine. They're really verifying that our production systems are what they're supposed to be and usually that's done through a physical configuration audit. You look at all those nuts and bolts uh, on the system, make sure they line up with the drawings and that we're getting off the end of the production line what was promised in the design. We also want to assess readiness for full rate production once we get done with LRIP there and make sure that the production processes are ready to go and that those units when they test out do what they're supposed to do. Um, that helps us establish that that product baseline uh, now not just in, on paper but in reality, in physical reality. We're going to update that systems engineering plan just like all our other major program documentation and that'll be ready there for that full rate production decision review uh, going forward and that's going to focus now on deployment and support and what we need to do technically to do those. Also we're going to track our support performance as we start getting those items out there in the field. We want to get feedback from the field on the technical performance of our system and see if there's any tweaks that need to be made going forward. To help us with that, our test and evaluation folks are going to actually assess the system now. Is the system ready for operational test? You're going to have a big test readiness review uh, to make sure all the pieces and parts are in place for that big final exam, that initial operational test and evaluation or IOT&E. We also want to go ahead and conduct that IOT&E, obviously, once we get some LRIP units off the line there. And we want to go ahead and make sure that we get any live fire test and evaluation and interoperability testing done as well, so that we've got all of the data we need now to assess operational effectiveness and suitability. What that means, effectiveness, is how well the system does what it's supposed to do. In other words, performance kinds of things. Suitability is can we maintain, operate, sustain that in the field. So we're looking more at the support side of things with suitability. But both of those need to be true before we go on to full rate production. And then we need to track it uh, as we go out. So our test and evaluation folks are going to help us do that and gather all the test data for us that proves those things out. We're also going to determine any follow on test needs. Sometimes there are hiccups in operational testing that we then need to go on and fix and test out, so any planning for that will need to be done during this time as well. Our software developers now, oftentimes they're still doing a little bit of development even after milestone C. So they need to assess that their software is functional and ready for deployment. They also need to execute that deployment and support and make sure we have things in place uh, to capture anything that becomes a problem on the software side and make sure that we have a no kidding plan for how the different software builds are getting out there to the field, the training is getting done, all of those things have to be in place. They also need to keep their finger on the pulse of cybersecurity and make sure that the system is able to withstand any kind of attacks and continue to refine that program protection plan with the feedback that they get from the field. We also want to track performance and support metrics for software, particularly in this career field 
and we want to plan for any future software versions because software is one of those things that we tend to continually update on a system, so you've got to stay on top of that. Our production quality and manufacturing folks are, are now really hitting the ground running because they are going to be assessing how the contractor is doing with the production. Uh, do they have their quality management in place? Are they looking at variability on the, on the products that are coming off their line and tracking that using statistical proce process control and those kinds of things? They also are going to be the focal point for our production readiness review prior to this full rate production decision review. So they're going to be assessing the low rate initial production processes and making sure that we're ready to ramp up and go ahead and produce the rest of the buy. They're also going to monitor full rate production once that starts. And again, they're going to be looking at quality. What's coming off the line? Is it looking as good as it should? Or is the contractor doing what they are supposed to do to make sure we're getting a quality product out the other end. And last but certainly not least, our logisticians now are going to start the fielding process and they are responsible mainly for that fielding and for the training of the units and for the supplying and equipping uh, as we go forward. So they're going to assess the supportability of the production systems as we go through low, low rate initial production and that initial operational test and evaluation and they're going to execute the fielding of the integrated support packages that we developed in the previous phases there. They're also going to start uh, ramping up that training and support as I talked about earlier and they're going to refine the performance support metrics that we look at as we go forward. Again we're looking for feedback from the field here for how we're doing and we're going to put into place those performance based metrics and performance based incentives with our contractors to make sure that we're getting what the warfighter needs in terms of reliability and turnaround time, repairability, all those kinds of things. So they're going to continue to refine that life cycle support plan, sustainment plan uh, through this phase and into the next phase and that's just going to be an ongoing process because you're going to be learning more and more about your system and more and more about how your metrics are working out on your contracts. So this has been just a quick walkthrough of the production and deployment phase of the overall defense acquisition system. I hope you're taking advantage of the other videos that we have on the other phases and taking advantage of the online resources that we have at www.dau.mil. Thanks for watching.